And buyers that don't necessarily realize that a seller might offer free returns, eBay is basically giving them a flashing sign saying, hey, they offer free returns. So just buy it and if you don't like it, you can send it back for free. Hey everyone, it's Lindy. Welcome back to my channel. I'm warning you right now, you better sit down, buckle up, because we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. If you are brand new to my channel, every single month I like to do a sales recap of every everything that sold for me on eBay over the last month. And I use these videos as a way of documenting my own personal business growth and as a way to communicate with all of you guys some things that I might have learned over the last month of selling. So today's video, we're doing a very basic monthly sales recap like I usually do. I'm gonna talk about my gross sales, my selling costs, what kind of net sales and net profits I have, how much I plan to pay myself, I'm also going to update you guys on the total progress for those monthly goals that I set for myself back at the beginning of the year. But there's also a few other topics that I wanted to let you guys know about just so that you are aware. And spoiler alert, some of them you're probably not gonna like very much, but I do like to use my platform as a way to let you guys know what exactly is going on, things that I have seen in the event that you might not have noticed them. And then as usual, I will also take you into to my computer and I will scroll through my paid and shipped page and let you guys see some of the items that sold for me over the month of February. And of course, before we begin, I would definitely appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up that lets me know that you appreciate that I take the time to create this content. And if videos about selling merchandise online interest you, I do highly encourage you to subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell. That way you're notified whenever I post a new video. So first things first, let's talk about the total sales that I made for the month of February. We are in the sales report tab looking at February 1st to February 28th, 2021. My total gross sales topped out at $4,457.04 which is down 10.3%. So I do see that my sales are down. However, it is not something that I'm really concerned about because I know that February is a short month. And when we go look at the week to week, it is pretty consistent overall from the performance that I had last month. I do also know that there are some things going on in the background right now. There's a lot of people waiting on stimulus money. I know that people are pinching their pennies right now. And so I am grateful for every single sale that I have. So even though it says that I am down a little bit, I still feel like I am performing well with the market overall. We wanna take a really quick glance at the week to week. We can see here that for the first through the seventh, the total sales for the week were $754.87. The week of February 8th through the 14th, my sales were $1,731.30. I had a really big week that week. Can't exactly say why. Maybe I had some really high quantity sales. Oh, I had a few. I had uh, 30 of these sale for a total here of uh, $267. I sold 10 of these during that period for 150, eight of these for a total of 102, six of these for a total of 114, six of these for $121, uh, five of these for 43. So I can see that, you know, I had a jump of about $1,000 that week. It was probably because I sold a lot of large quantities of higher ticket items. That might have something to do with it. And then the week of February 15th through the 21st, it averaged back down to $813. And then of course, the final week of February, my sales were $1,157.49. So you could see that I'm holding the consistency typically week after week. So that's another reason why I'm not exactly freaking out that my sales for the month are down. Because overall, it's pretty consistent. At, at least it's consistent from what I see. So now going back to the full month of February, we can see here that from this total, the amount of $248.30 was collected by eBay on my behalf for taxes and government fees. My total selling costs totaled $1,708. 
dollars and 94 cents which was 38.3 percent of my total sales which is actually very very good i usually talk in these sold videos that my total selling costs are usually around 40 or 41 percent so obviously that is down for this last month which leaves me with a net sales total of two thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars and eighty cents just a hair off from twenty five hundred dollars it couldn't be just 20 cents higher, really? That would make bookkeeping so much easier. And so if we scroll down on this sales report page, we can actually see exactly what all of these selling costs were. So if you just look over here, it is a, you could see just the breakdown of percentages. So you could see that my eBay fees totaled 38.5% and shipping labels were 61.5%, which shipping labels are always the majority of my selling costs. But if you wanna see in more detail, you just hit this little drop down arrow. And then from there, we can see that I paid $113.30 for insertion fees, $532.26 for final value fees, 85 cents in international fees, and then I ended up getting $48 worth of transaction fee credits. I do believe that that is the um, top rated plus discount, if I'm not mistaken. And then of course, a charge of $59.95 for subscription fees. And then of course, a total of $1,050 for shipping labels. And then if you continue scrolling down on your sales report page, you can see some listing insights is what they call it. You can see how many quantities of certain items you sold and what dollar amounts that amounted to. Um, so a lot of these big ticket sales that I got were in that one week where I ended up doing $1,700 in sales. You can see a lot of these in large quantities. Um, and then for the most part, aside from that one week where I hit $1,700, most of it was just a lot of one-offs, maybe, you know, two quantity sold or three quantity sold. It was a lot of singles, which meant a lot of individual packages going out. Okay, so now let's go over what exactly I plan to pay myself from my eBay business for the month of February. As we saw, my total net sales amount was $2,499.80. If you've seen my other sold videos, you kind of know how I calculate my paycheck from that number. What I choose to do is I choose to take that net sales number and I pay myself 50% and I put 50% back into my business. Now, I don't wanna go into extreme detail about how I came up with this number if you've been following my channel for a long time you probably have heard me explain it in these videos over and over and over again but basically what happens is I have a total capital amount in my business bank account and it has enough buffer and padding and cushion whatever you want to call it so that I can operate my business by buying inventory paying my helper paying my fees buying shipping supplies and all of that so what happens is every month I just replenish a little bit by putting in half of the net sales and then I pay myself the other half for a very very long time I paid myself a very very small percentage or I didn't pay myself anything and now I have finally reached the point where that cushion is big enough to where I can take profits out of my business and so that means that for the month of February I am going to be paying myself $1,249.90 from my eBay business. So now let's talk about my own personal progress for my business goals for 2021. And then we will get into the topics of discussion for the video. There are three different things I wanted to discuss. And then after that, we will get into looking at my paid and ship page so I can show you guys some of the items that sold for me over the month of February. So now I have come to a decision that I I am going to change how I track my progress for the year and let me explain why. So when the year first began, I thought to myself, I was going to basically work towards an end of year goal and I was going to track how far away I was from meeting that goal. But then the more and more I thought about it, the more I decided that that's not how I want to track progress. Mainly because I feel like I set a very, very lofty goal 
for myself for the end of the year. If you guys recall, I said that I wanted to reach $100,000 in sales for this particular eBay store, as well as 500 new listings per month, which is 6,000 new listings this year. In my last sales recap where I went over the month of January, I was talking about how I was feeling a little bit defeated because I didn't reach my listing goal in the very first month. And I felt like my sales also didn't reflect what I was hoping them to look like in order to reach that $100,000 goal by the end of the year. And again, this last month in February, again, I did not reach my listing goal, nor did my sales total an amount that I was hoping to see in order to catch up to that $100,000 sales goal. So now having two months back to back where performance wasn't where I was hoping it was going to be, I didn't reach the listing goal that I was hoping to have reached. I started to doubt myself. I talked about in the live stream that I had a lot of self-doubt that maybe the, the goal that I set was just a little bit too high and I'm starting to really feel defeated. The self-doubt is really setting in. Am I really gonna be able to hit these goals or not? I was really starting to think that I should just, you know, scratch the goals altogether. And then I decided that in these monthly sales recap videos, what I would want to do instead is track the progress, not in relation to hitting that end of year sales goal and listing goal, but rather just tracking my progress over the month. And then if I get to that sales number at the end of the year, if I get to that new listing number at the end of the year, then I've achieved my goal. But I don't want to necessarily focus on how much I have left to hit that goal. I just want to talk about my progress thus far. Does that make sense? I tend to battle with self-doubt a lot. Uh, I don't always talk about it, but I doubt what I am doing every single day. So if you find yourself doubting whether or not you're making the right decisions with your business, I am right there with you, I'm telling you. I struggle with self-doubt every single day. And when I am looking too far out, or if I see that I am way too far away from a goal, I get really, really defeated and I start doubting myself even more. So what I wanna do in these monthly sales recap videos, instead of saying how far I have till 100,000 in sales and 6,000 new listings, I just wanna track my progress thus far and see if I hit it by the end of the year. I think that that will help me not stress about it so much. I still have those end goals in mind, but I don't want that to be the full focus on reporting the progress with you guys. That being said, here is the current progress that I have had thus far. For the month of February, my sister-in-law who is helping me list and I were able to get up 266 new listings. So that means that there are a total of 634 new listings in my eBay store since January 1st. I've also added an additional $6,000 worth of value to my eBay store. And then I pulled up the quarterly progress and it looks like January 1st through February 28th, my year to date total sales is $9,672.66. So I'm just a hair under 10% of my total goal that I wanted to reach by the end of the year. And the thing that makes me the most happy about this progress in particular, is you can see here on my total sales for the quarter thus far, I am up 28.6% from the prior quarter. So even though, this is what I was talking about, this is what I was talking about, about feeling defeated and why I wanted to change my mindset around what exactly I'm doing and how I am managing to reach the goals that I set. Looking at it this way is more encouraging to me. So rather than focusing on I'm only 10% of the way to my goal. Instead, I wanna focus on the fact that I am 28.6% ahead of the same period last year. That, to me, means I'm winning. It means I'm winning 2021 in my eBay store so far. If you can see any green at all from the prior period, you're doing good. And that deserves to be acknowledged 
It is a win and I choose to focus on the wins rather than how far I am away from my goal. So if you set some business goals for yourself for 2021, I highly encourage you to do the same if you're easily defeated or if you struggle with self-doubt like I do. Look at the picture now, not compared to how far you have left to go, but how well you're performing now compared to the same period before. Okay, so now let's talk about the three topics that I wanted to discuss about things that I learned about eBay over the last month. First, I wanted to follow up about that $20 eBay dispute fee that we had discussed on a couple of Motivation Mondays ago. So I was really fired up in a live stream because I had basically taken a week off because my children were sick, there was a big cold snap here, we almost lost power. I basically took an entire week off and during that week there was this $20 eBay dispute fee that popped up. And so the following Monday and I ended up going live and we had an open discussion about it to try to figure out exactly what this $20 dispute fee was. And so I wanted to follow up because it looks like there was a lot of confusion in the comment section. And so I wanted to follow up with exactly what my understanding of this dispute fee could be and what it likely is and why it might be misunderstood. So when this $20 dispute fee was brought to my attention, it was brought to my attention in the sense that the $20 fee was charged to a seller because the buyer had opened an item not received case within eBay, meaning the buyer bought something from the seller, the seller shipped it to the buyer, but the buyer opened a case within eBay saying, I never received my package. From there, eBay then sided with the buyer, closed the case against the seller saying that the package never arrived and the seller was charged a $20 fee for the dispute ending in favor of the buyer and not the seller. And this is where I think there was a lot of confusion because there are a lot of people that kept saying, no, this $20 dispute fee is about banking. It's about eBay managed payments. It's not about opening cases within eBay. It's about filing disputes with banks. And this was a very, very similar fee that we saw with PayPal. And so I wanted to talk about this and try to gain some insight and please go down in the comment section and give me your opinion, what you know, have you been charged this dispute fee? What was the reason why this dispute fee was charged? Because there's a lot of confusion here. There's a lot of speculation about what cases are causing this fee to be charged. There are some people that are saying, no, it's, it's a dispute filed with the buyer's bank against eBay managed payments. And so eBay is charging you as the seller a $20 fee for a chargeback of the buyer's credit card. And then there are the people saying, no, this $20 dispute has nothing to do with chargebacks on cards. It has everything to do with opening up cases within eBay. It has nothing to do with banking. And so that's where this confusion lies because when I was first notified of this dispute, it was strictly about opening up a case within eBay, not having anything to do with chargebacks involving banks and eBay managed payments. If that is truly the case, then this is a fee that we all would expect to see. We were charged this when we used PayPal. If a buyer opens a banking dispute, whether it's managed payments or PayPal, if the buyer opens up a dispute with their card or their bank, then you as the seller do have to pay a $20 or $30, whatever the amount is, of a fee because the buyer is disputing the charge with their bank. But there is so much confusion around what exactly this fee is being charged for. And I have to tell you guys, I am not perfectly clear because I have not been faced with this dispute fee myself. So. This is where I am leaning on you guys to go down into the comment section. If you have been charged this $20 eBay dispute fee that's been going around on social media, we're all trying to figure out what exactly this fee is and why we're being charged. Did it have to do with a chargeback with your bank or is this a fee that you are getting charged because a buyer is disputing a case such as their item did not arrived or an item not as described within eBay and then eBay is then charging the seller for cases closed against them. Please do let me know. Let's try to get some sort of clarification on this because 
Having to pay eBay a $20 dispute fee is extremely frustrating, and I wish that we definitively knew exactly where this fee was coming from and under what circumstances we as sellers are being charged. The second thing that I wanted to talk about has to do with sellers that are offering free returns and an email that eBay has been sending out potential buyers that could likely harm sellers that offer free returns. So this was first brought to my attention by a viewer that has been a subscriber of my YouTube channel for a really long time, Midwest Picker. I will make sure to link his YouTube channel down in the video description. Go give him a like and a sub. Go watch the entire video that he did about this topic, please, because I am just going to basically touch on it. So if you want to know more about it, please do go view his entire video. And I have to tell you guys, it is pretty alarming. So I want to let you know the gist of what exactly is going on so that you can know that this could potentially be an increase in returns and it's eBay doing it to us. So the gist of what is happening is those sellers that have free returns, eBay is actually marketing to people that look at your items, notating that you offer free returns, basically trying to entice the buyer to try it and then return it, they can just return it for free, no big deal, which is extremely frustrating to sellers because we all know that shipping is never free. Free returns are not free. Free shipping is not free. So for eBay to basically email and entice buyers by saying, hey, that item that you looked at, that seller offers free returns, wink, 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 nudge, nudge, why don't you go buy it? Because you could always return it for free if you don't like it. That's a real problem to me because we are not big dog sellers, right? If it was something like Walmart or Target selling on the eBay platform, then okay, they might be able to eat all of those return costs. But we are just average people selling stuff out of our basements or out of our closets or out of storage bins under our beds. We don't have the money to just start taking back returns because people decided to try it out and then return it because maybe they didn't like it. I see this as being a huge problem for sellers that sell clothing. Clothing is notorious for having a high return rate anyway because people might buy something just thinking that they could perhaps try it on if they didn't like it or if it didn't look the way that they thought it was going to look on them they could just send it back to the seller at absolutely no cost no risk to them at all and buyers that don't necessarily realize that a seller might offer free returns ebay is basically giving them a flashing sign saying hey they offer free returns so just buy it and if you don't like it you can send it back for free i understand that ebay is trying to get business, right? I understand that eBay is trying to incentivize buyers to spend money on the platform because that means more sales for us, more profits for eBay. But where I think eBay is totally wrong in this is the fact that they are putting a lot of burden on the sellers because if a buyer looks at an item, doesn't even watch it, and has no intention of buying it for whatever reason, eBay is trying to attract those buyers by saying, hey, the seller offers free returns. If I looked at an item, decided not to even watch it, obviously I'm not that interested in the item. Maybe I'm indifferent about it, but you know what? Maybe knowing that the seller offers free returns, Maybe I'll just go buy it anyway, because hey, I could just return it, no cost to me. I see some big problems with this, and so I wanted to bring this to your attention so that you could really be on the lookout for this and maybe even voice your concern to eBay. Let me know down in the comments, have you noticed a spike in your returns lately if you offer free returns? I'm not exactly sure when these emails started going out, but over on Midwest Pickers channel, he did an entire video all about it. Again, it's linked in my video description, so go watch his video. eBay just keeps coming up with stuff, don't they? They just, why? Why? And then the third thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is a mistake that I made. 
I was trying to be cheap and it's ending up costing me money. Let me tell you exactly what I'm talking about. So I had a series of face creams, eye creams, skincare, and some of the packaging differed, but the UPCs were the same. So what ends up happening for some products is the UPC number, which is that barcode number on the packaging, that number is the exact same, which indicates that that product is identical even though the packaging may differ. The packaging could be different for several different reasons. Maybe they decided to freshen up the package and so there was a brand new run. But the bottom line is if the UPC matches, the product is identical. And what ended up happening to me was I ended up having people return product because the item that they received did not exactly match the photo on the listing. And this is where I say being cheap is actually costing me money. So as you probably noticed, I do pay insertion fees. That's because I have more listings than my free insertions for my premium store subscription pays for. So that means that every listing over a thousand, I have to pay 10 cents for. So even though I have some products that have the exact same UPC, I have not been creating separate listings because it's all the same product. Even though the packaging is different, it's the exact same product. So logic tells me, why should I pay 10 cents for five different listings when all of these products are the exact same? And it has caused problems because I have been selling them and shipping items to buyers that are different packaging than those photographed in the actual listing. Buyers are complaining. They are opening up item not as described returns. I am having to pay the return shipping back and refund them their money. And you guys, it has been extremely frustrating because I know that the product is the same. They know the product is the same, but they're just being... I'm just gonna say it. They're being a bunch of Karens about the whole thing. Oh, the box is different than what's in the picture. Wee moo, wee moo. I mean, that's just how I imagine them to sound. I mean. <gasps> so all in all, just being cheap and not paying another 40 cents worth of insertion fees to create separate listings for these items that have different packaging, even though they're all the same UPC, wanting to save 40 cents on insertion fees has now cost me about $150 in returns and refunds. 40 cents, $150. Just, just a little salty, just a little salty. But anyway, those were the three things that I wanted to update you guys on. So now let's go ahead and go into my computer. We're gonna go into my paid and shipped page and I want to scroll through and let you guys see exact items that sold for me over the month of February. But before I do that, I do wanna take just a really quick minute to thank the sponsor of this video because most of the items that I sold over the month of February came from this sponsor. You guys probably know exactly who they are because I talk about them all the time on my YouTube channel. Wholesale Ninjas is my favorite liquidation company out there because everything that they sell is quality product. Everything is impeccably packaged. Hardly anything ever arrives damaged or expired, which means that whenever I get merchandise from them, I know that almost everything is going to be in sellable condition, which a lot of other companies out there, you just don't know. Liquidation as a whole is an as is sale. There's never any guarantees with liquidation at all. And in my experience, Wholesale Ninjas is definitely a step above and beyond other companies that are out there right now. They have pallets of master case general merchandise. They also have lots of cosmetics and personal care, which are my personal favorite. Wholesale Ninjas can accommodate any level seller, whether you just want to buy a hundred count lot all the way up to truckloads. Not only that, but their shipping is fast. I do have an active coupon code for them. The code is Lindy25 and it gets you $25 off of anything on the Wholesale Ninjas website. I will make sure to put all of this down in the video description and I will also link to some of my favorite lots that they have on their site. Thank you again to Wholesale Ninjas for partnering with me and sponsoring this monthly sold video. Now let's go into my paid and shipped page. I will scroll through and I will show you guys the actual listings for me that sold over the month of February.
All right, so we're starting with the most recent. Let's just scroll through. Um, you're gonna recognize a lot of this stuff from the most recent Wholesale Ninja's personal care unboxing that I just did. Lots and lots of face creams. Uh, Olay Regenerist Active Moisturizer. Uh, sold for $9.98. We have some Dove Men Care Wipes sold for $14.29. Uh, we have two lots of Two St. Ives Hydrating Body Lotion sold for $28.58. One person bought seven of these Olay Pro X Professional Anti-Aging Firming Creams. So I did have the volume pricing turned on, which basically means the more they buy, the more they save. So they ended up getting seven for $226.66. Two pack of L'Oreal Advanced Revitalift facial masks, uh, best offer for $20. A two pack of Pond's Cold Cream for $16.09. A lot of three OGX Coconut Water Hydration Oil sold for $17.98. An Olay Mask Clo uh, Glow Boost White Charcoal Stick sold for $6.19. So this is actually something that I sell in lots of two, but I had one straggler. So that's why I have one listing of one for $6. Um, I do have other listings created that have multiples, but sometimes, you know, you don't have an even number. So you have to have a listing that has an extra. Oh, let's see. There's some more Olay. Let me scroll down here. Uh, here's uh, four, a lot of four urban hydration, moisture locking, castor and shea body lotion uh, sold for $30 on best offer. Oh, let me see. I can never make it all the way through the month, so I'm just gonna kind of scroll down so that we don't get stuck in just the last week of the month. A uh, three pack of Tresemme Expert Keratin Smooth Hairspray sold for $23.39. Someone bought two of these Olay Regenerist Miracle Boost Anti-Aging uh, Serums for $19.78. Uh, let's see, scroll, 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 scroll. There's more Olay, see all the Olay. Here is a replenishing night cream sold for $9.79. Uh, someone gave me a best offer of three of these Pro X cleansing facial systems for $57. Uh, three pack of Degree Men's Cool Rush deodorant sold for $15.88. An Oral-B 3D White Pulsar Toothbrush sold for $9.88. A Gillette Mach 3 Razor with six cartridges sold for $15.09. Ah, there's one of my subscribers bought Pink Stork for $14.14. Thank you very much. I always greatly appreciate when you guys shop with me. I truly, truly do. A Sun Bum Mineral Sunscreen Face Lotion sold two to one person for $35.88. So this is a Garnier Skin Renew Moisture Cream. So this did not have the box. I actually had some that had the boxes and some that didn't have the boxes, but they still had the seal on them even though there was no box. And I say that there was no box because the box was really, really damaged. Something leaked all over them and I wasn't comfortable selling the item in the box. So I just basically took them out of the box and listed them. Uh, but the, the uh, containers were still sealed. So I didn't have any problem doing that because they were clearly never opened. So someone bought two of those for $39.68. And there is another pink stork for $14.14. A lot of three CoverGirl contouring blush on best offer for $11. A set of three two packs of Burt's Bees Cucumber Mint uh, Lip Balm for $12.81. see. A Bliss Lemon Sage uh, smoothing body butter sold for $21.74. This Bliss brand always performs very, very well. Mm, let's see here. There's some more poopery. I think I'm completely sold out of poopery now. You guys have seen poopery in almost every single sold video for the last few months. Uh, someone bought the last two of the two packs for a total of $32.08. Let's see here. Let's get past this week. Let's see here. We've got a two pack of Simply Neosporin for 
a 10 pack of Mark Anthony deep hydrating conditioning treatments for $18.99. So a lot of the times, you know, you guys see the, the little packages like the little face masks or the hair masks, you know, don't just throw them to the side. Make sure that you list them because they are worth money. These, this was just 10 little packages of deep conditioning hair treatments sold for $18.99. Here is uh, six Nexus dry shampoos for 15. OGX argon oil penetrating oil sold for 15.09 for one of those. Uh, one uh, a set of two of those Aveeno positively radiant Max Glow infusion drops. Those are the really 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 tiny vials sold for eight dollars and sixty six cents. There's another razor. Another subscriber purchase. Thank you so much, Pamela. Here, someone bought three of the total, the Olay Total Effects 7 and 1 for $55.47. Here's a three pack of Maybelline Colossal Spider Effect Mascara, sold on best offer for $12. A four pack of Barrier No More Blisters Blister Prevention Spray, sold for $12.91. There's another one of those three packs of the Jergens BB body cream. I've shown these in the last, I think, three sold videos now. I had a whole bunch of them. They're still selling little by little. I still have three sets of three left. This one set of three sold for $43.60. So this was an error, and I just recently... I just recently did a video talking about hiring help and things that you can expect when you hire help. And this is actually something that was a mistake that ended up happening. So uh, my sister-in-law, she mistyped the number and this ended up selling this lot of six Nexus dry shampoos. Someone got a really good deal. They got six bottles for $9.76. So it should have been $19.76 and she missed the one and did $9. And I ended up losing a little bit of money on it. But that is one of the things that happens when you choose to have someone help you because mistakes happen. You know, I've been listing on eBay for years and she hasn't. And she just doesn't have the eye that I have. Anyone that you might hire to help you out won't have the eye that you have. And so when mistakes like this happen, I did not cancel the sale. It, it, is my, it is my opinion that if you as the seller make a mistake, that doesn't give you the right to cancel on your buyer. Uh, there are a lot of sellers out there that might make a mistake and they might decide to just cancel the order and just relist it at a different price. I don't think that that is good business practice. It is my business. I am the one that did not catch this mistake. Therefore, this person just got you know a good deal. They saved 10 bucks because of an error. And it would have been, I believe, immoral of me to cancel the sale just because it was the incorrect price. That is just my personal opinion. That is how I choose to do business. But this is just, you know, goes to show that mistakes do happen, especially when you have someone helping you. And this is just how I chose to handle it. I did not cancel it. I went ahead and shipped it to the buyer regardless, even though the, the price was a, a, it was a gross mistake. It was, it was a gross mistake. Oh, let's see here. We've got some NYX or NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer for $9.19. There's another razor. Um, let's see, Olay Daily Facials pack of uh, water activated cleansing wipe sold for $11.98. Let's see, scroll down a little more. So here's a two pack of two tubes in each uh, of these Burt's Bees Ultra Conditioning Lip Balm sold two packs for $16. Uh, Neutrogena Rapid, uh, Rapid Circle Repair Eye Cream sold for $9. Here's a three pack of Shea Moisture Coconut Hydrating Sleep Mask sold for 12. Uh, one Oasis Silk Water-Based Personal Lubricant sold on Best Offer for 16. 
Uh, let's see, let me scroll down here a little more. Here's a four pack of Old Spice Original Scent Deodorant sold for $24.06. Someone bought three of these Burt's Bees Intense Hydration Night Cream for $30.36. A Veet Sensitive Trimmer sold for $11.98. Uh, let's see, a two pack of Revlon All-in-One Mascara for $11.05. Two pack of Yes to Carrots Kale uh, Vitamin Enriched Facial Wipes sold for $13.56. Oh, there's another subscriber. Thank you so much. The Olay Regenerous Cleansing Whip uh, Cleanser sold for $8.26. Again, that was something else that I'm actually selling in lots, but I had one spare one, so it got a listing all on its own. But most of them, I think I'm selling four packs for $24 or $25, I think. Oh, here's something we haven't seen yet. A Skin to Mint Touch of Aloe Disposable Razor Set sold for $11.29. There's some Olay Total Effects Whip Moisturizer at 1102, which this kind of made me sad. So this, this exact Olay Whip used to sell for between $15 and $20, but the market has come down so much on these. It ended up selling for $11.02, and I was priced. Um, I wasn't the lowest, but I wasn't the highest either. So I did manage to sell it for $11.02, but I saw some listings at like $9 and change. I don't know why people are pricing it that low. It's worth so much more than that. Olay Regenerist uh, Re Revolution Complex Anti-Aging Moisturizer and Primer. So someone bought four of them using the volume pricing for $44.80. Oh, these were those. So I had mentioned in that Wholesale Ninja's personal care unboxing that I wasn't exactly sure if the Olay Pro X face washes sold for a good amount or not, and they definitely did. I sold one three pack of these Olay Pro X exfoliating skin renewal cleanser for $47.50 for a three pack. So that was awesome. Uh, let's see here. Someone bought three two packs of Betadine Antiseptic First Aid Spray, three two packs, so a total of six bo uh, six bottles for forty two dollars and seventy two cents. A two pack of Olay Quench Body Lotion for sixteen thirteen. Someone bought two of the Method Men Deodorant and Juniper and Sage for sixteen dollars. A pack of five Colgate Optic White Medium Bristle Toothbrushes for $18.79. Oh, here, someone bought two of those Olay Pro X Anti-Aging Lotion for $55.78. That was something else that came in that most recent Wholesale Ninjas order. Uh, someone bought 10 of the Olay Total Effects 7-in-1 Night Correcting Moisturizer for $178.90. Can you guys see why I love Olay so much? You see how much Olay I sell? Lots and lots and lots. There's a four pack of those Olay Facial Mists for $21.58. A Certain Dry Clinical Strength Antiperspirant for $10.69. So here's a mixed lot of L'Oreal Signature Matte Liquid Lipsticks. Uh, there wasn't really a lot of value selling them individually, so we thought that we would try doing a mixed color lot, and they ended up selling for $10.76. A three-pack of Aveeno Moisturizing Lotion, they were eight-ounce tubes, sold for $22.21. Here's the Art of Shaving a uh, lavender scented travel shave kit sold on best offer for $20. And so uh, there's been some cosmetics mixed mixed throughout. Um, usually my average sale price fluctuates between $15 and $17. It would definitely be higher if I had all of my cosmetics separately because you can see here uh, that my blush, that this CoverGirl blush sold for $6.40. I don't mind it though, because it's stuff like this, like little sales that come in that start trickling in more sales. So you could see these ended up selling. <laughs> okay, I know that, that I always tell you guys that like there are sales that gets the ball rolling, right? This is a prime example of that, prime example of that. So I ended up having one sale 
of a $6 blush, right? And then boom, this was within 30 minutes, I ended up selling something else. So I don't mind having these little sales here and there. Not every sale I have has to be a home run because those little sales bring in bigger sales. So that's why I don't mind. A lot of people really pay attention to average sale price. They want to keep lower ticket items out of their store. Me, I love having the lower ticket items mixed in with the bigger ticket items because it could be those sales of the lower ticket items that trigger sales of the bigger items. Um, and it brings my average sale price down. And you know what? I don't even care. There's lots of people that are like, I don't want less than a $30 average sale price. I don't really care. That's one reason why I don't ever talk about it. You know, I don't ever come on these sold videos and tell you guys my average sale price was $24 and 57 cents this month. That doesn't really matter to me because I will sell something for $6 and I will sell something for $60. It's all the same to me because the more sales sales I can get, the more activity that I can have in my eBay store, which means the more money that I can make. Here's a two pack of those Pro-X uh, replacement brushes for the, the dermatology uh, kind of set thing that I sold earlier, or rather later, it was up here, <laughs> for $13.01. Here's someone bought 30, that's right, 30 of these rock retinol sensitive night creams for $247.50. Uh, Pro X Dermological Eye Restoration Complex for $112.50. Here's a uh, Hydra Firming Cream from the Olay Pro X for $78, three of them. A uh, two pack of L'Oreal Paris Bambi Eyes sold for $11.14. Two pack of Pond's Daily Moisturizer sold for $11.15. And now I'm realizing that Pond's is not even in the title. That was, <laughs> that was a listing that my sister-in-law did. I need to make sure that we fix that if we get more in because that should, daily, that should definitely say Pond's Daily Moisturizer. Uh, Pond's wasn't even in the title, but it sold really fast. It sold within a day or two, so that's awesome. Uh, here's a Maybelline 24-hour lasting uh, gel eyeliner in shade Eggplant, sold for $8.34. And two pack of Pink Stork Fertility Supplement, sold for $18.99. Two pack of Neutrogena Multivitamin Moisturizer, sold for $14.25. And you could see a lot and a lot of the same stuff. So I think that, uh, I think this video is long enough, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and videos like it, please do give it a thumbs up. That lets me know that you like this kind of content. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me any questions or comments down in the comments below. Don't forget to check the video description. I will put a lot of useful information in there. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I will see you with my next video. Bye-bye.